This Lockheed Constellation airliner, powered by a turbo compound engine, was able to fly non-stop from San Francisco to London in 1955. That was much more range than a B-29 bomber that used basically the same Curtis Wright R-3350 radial aircraft engine. Back in the early days of World War II, Allison aircraft engine designers were figuring out a way of cutting the fuel consumption on aircraft engines so they could go further on a tank of gas. Some bright young engineer thought up the idea of using a turbine fed from the high energy exhaust gas to feed power back into the crankshaft. The engine was called a turbo compound engine. Curtis Wright ran with the idea after the war and spent many hours and years developing an engine that burned 20 to 30 percent less fuel from the same horsepower. Given the uh, current price of fuel we could really use an engine that increases the miles per gallon by 20 to 30 percent. This picture is a Lockheed P2V-1, powered by the Curtis Wright engine named Truculent Turtle. It was stripped down, fitted with auxiliary fuel tanks, plus an extended nose, and set an unrefueled long-distance flight record in September 1947. The Turtle flew from Perth, Australia to Columbus, Ohio, with a crew of four Navy officers and a young kangaroo, covering 18,089.3 kilometers, or 11,235.6 miles, in 55 hours, 17 minutes. That unrefueled distance record held for many years until much larger jet-powered airplanes like B-52s and 747s became operational. This picture is a diagram of the Curtis Wright R3350 turbo compound engine. This photo is a cutaway of the R3350 turbo compound aircraft engine. One of three blowdown turbines can be seen on the left. This graph is something called a heat balance chart. It came from an SAE paper published in 1954 on the R3350 turbo compound engine. Heat and horsepower are interchangeable. The chart shows how the waste horsepower in the exhaust is divided up into potentially useful kinetic energy and non-usable pure heat energy. The potential kinetic energy is a grand total of 920 horsepower or 34.7 percent of the total energy in the exhaust. Note that this engine is only putting out 1680 horsepower at the prop. The waste horsepower in the exhaust far exceeds that number at 2655 horsepower. How can this be? Yes, it's really true. All internal combustion engines put out far more horsepower out the exhaust in the form of waste heat and kinetic energy than they put out in the crankshaft. What is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is merely the blast of air coming out of the exhaust pipe. It has nothing to do directly with the temperature of the exhaust gas. This blast of air can drive a turbine. The most important thing to note about this diagram is the amount of horsepower wasted by the exhaust valves at 525 horsepower. The main problem Curtis Wright had was the exhaust valves would break up and take out the turbine on the way out of the exhaust pipe. No wonder Curtis Wright had problems with the life of the exhaust valves. Most of the development money was spent on trying to improve the durability of the exhaust valves. All three turbines recovered only 160 horsepower. The 160 horsepower represents a 10% increase in horsepower with no additional fuel burned. Looking at it another way, for a given horsepower, it represents a 10% reduction in fuel burn. This graph shows the decrease in brake specific fuel consumption for the R3350 at sea level and at 30,000 feet. 
The upper part of the chart represents the increase in horsepower, and the lower part, the decrease in fuel consumption. These are excellent numbers, down in the diesel engine range, despite losing over half the potential horsepower in the exhaust valves. Current piston engines are only about 30% efficient, and diesels are only about 35% efficient. This is really a national disgrace, given that this turbo compound technology has been on the shelf for over 50 years. Along came the four-stroke rotary engine about 1959, with no exhaust valves. For some strange reason, nobody put two and two together and married the rotary with the exhaust turbine, despite the fact that Curtis Wright was working on both. Later, and sometime in the 1980s, NASA discovered the rotary engine, and they thought it would make a fine aircraft engine. They were proven right. Mazda rotary engines have been used in light aircraft since 1973. This is a heat balance chart for a Mazda Wankel rotary engine. Note, for a 200 horsepower engine, there is over 300 horsepower wasted in the exhaust. If we can capture only one third of that in kinetic energy, we could increase the power output to 300 horsepower. A 150% increase with no increase in fuel burn. Or putting it in terms of miles per gallon, we could increase the miles per gallon by about 50%. That's not likely to happen on the first engineering models, but 20 to 30% is probably obtainable. NASA also commissioned a paper computer study on the turbo compound rotary engine, and that study predicted 80 horsepower out of an exhaust turbine connected to a 200 horsepower rotary. That would translate to a 40% increase in miles per gallon. Understandable, because the rotary engine has no exhaust valves to waste energy. Anybody that has heard a rotary engine running without a muffler can attest to the fact that the rotary has a tremendous amount of kinetic energy in the exhaust. Unfortunately, nobody built and tested the hardware. Apparently space travel was more important. This 3D drawing is a very straightforward application of the turbine to a rotary engine. One feature of the Mazda rotary engine is it's capable of running up to 11,000 RPM. This is the same RPM range of many turbine engines. No gearbox would be required with this configuration. The exact diameter of the turbine can be changed to optimize the horsepower. Also variable nozzle can be implemented to broaden the RPM range where the turbine is effective in extracting waste horsepower. For cooling purposes, the turbine blades can be hollowed out exactly like the turbine blades on the R3350. This is a picture of Paul Carey's 1500 horsepower supercharged Mazda 3 rotor engine and an R3350 turbine. The turbine was a perfect match for a 3 rotor as it had 3 scrolls just like the P-Port 3 rotor Mazda. However, before Paul could hook the turbine to the engine, the engine was destroyed in a supercharger explosion. This 3D drawing is a configuration that uses stock off-the-shelf turbocharger to implement a turbo compound engine. Again, a variable nozzle would broaden the RPM and horsepower range. Turbo compound diesel truck engines are already being manufactured. The question is, when is the passenger car industry going to wake up to these facts?